Let's start a new chapter today, which is units and dimensions. And in this video, we'll be introducing the topic. Now, first of all, let's talk about units. Units are the most basic aspect of any measurement. For example, in current days, we use meter for length, kilogram for mass, and without them, any measurement is meaningless. They are arbitrarily chosen and internationally accepted. So, the definition of units like meters and kilograms are arbitrary, but they are accepted by the entire international community so that there is no difficulty in communicating the measurements with each other. For example, over here we have a diagram or we have a photograph of uh, the national prototype meter bar in France which is used as a reference for SI units. Now let's talk about how can we classify units. We can classify units in two categories. The first one is fundamental and the second are derived units. The fundamental units are arbitrarily chosen to be fundamental and they become the foundation for any metric system. Now any other unit in that metric system can be derived from these fundamental units. Let's take an example for this. Now over here, if I choose speed and time as my fundamental units, then length becomes a derived unit which can be obtained as speed into time and its unit will simply be the unit of speed into the unit of time. However, if I choose length and time as fundamental units, then speed becomes the derived unit which is length upon time and its, its unit will be the unit of length and uh, divided by the unit of time. So what we understand from here is that I can choose either speed or length as my fundamental and I can still obtain either length or speed as my derived unit. So my choice of the fundamental unit is clearly arbitrary. But once I have chosen it, every other unit can be essentially derived from it. So as we know in our current times, we choose length and time as fundamental and speed is a derived quantity. Now let's talk about some earlier systems of unit which were in use in the world before the SI units came into picture. One of them was the CGS system which had three fundamental quantities. Centimeter was for length, gram was for mass and second was for time. That's why the that's where the abbreviation CGS came from. The next set of units that came into picture was the FPS system which was also called foot pound second system. Foot was used for length, pound for mass and second for time. Then ultimately in the later uh, part of the century, MKS system was largely prevalent in Europe and it had meter for length, kilogram for mass and second for time as their three fundamental quantities. Now because these different systems of units were used simultaneously in the world, there was a lot of difficulty among scientists to communicate measurements with each other. That's why there was a need to define a more fundamental set of units that is accepted by the international community and that's exactly when the SI units came into picture. International systems of units or SI units essentially have seven base units and two other units defined within their fundamental set. The seven base units defined are length, mass, time having their units meter, kilogram and second, electric current, temperature and amount of substance having the units ampere, kelvin and mole, luminous intensity as candela, the other first seven fundamental units and two other units which were defined were plane angle and solid angle which had units of radians and steradians. Now these two units are special and slightly different from the other seven because these two are dimensionless whereas the others are not dimensionless. We will talk about the dimensions of physical quantities later down the chapter but first of all, let's try to understand the meaning of plane angle and the solid angle. Now, the plane angle is defined as the ratio of length of arc to the small radius r of the sector at which the angle is subtended. Unit for plane angle is radians like I explained before. So, understanding it, over here we have a sector whose center angle or the angle subtended at the center is d theta. The radius of the sector is r and the arc length is ds. In that case, I define my angle d theta as ds upon r. Now, just to get an intuitive understanding of this, if I complete this sector, I know the angle subtended at the center is 2 pi radians. So, if I put the value of theta as 2 pi and I cross multiply r, what I obtain is the arc length when the entire sector is complete, which is also the circumference of the circle, which we already know from our lower standards as 2 pi r. So, this definition of plane angle clearly holds. One very important thing though, this definition only provides the value of angle in terms of radians, not in terms of degrees. So, don't put the value of angle in terms of degrees while using this relationship. Let's talk about solid angle now. 
solid angle d omega is the ratio of intercepted area da to the radius r square of a uh, solid sphere that's the most important part unit for solid angle is steradians like i explained before so over here we have a sector of a sphere basically at which at the center we have a solid angle of d omega you can already imagine that and the radius of the sphere is r now by this uh, sector we have an intercepted area of da on the uh, surface of the sphere if this is given to us then we can define our solid angle omega or in this case d omega as da upon r square this is a this is a very important relationship once again to get a physical feeling if i complete the entire sector into a sphere we know the angle subtended at the center will be 4 pi steradians and if i cross multiply r square the surface area of the sphere will come out to be 4 pi r square which we know is already true so this is a definition of solid angle and the definition of plane angle must be remembered properly now let's talk about the different prefixes that we use with these units to express different magnitudes of them for example in lower standards you may have known that 10 is to power 1 2 and 3 times a specific unit is expressed as deca hecto and kilo respectively for example if i have to express 1000 grams i can also call it as 1 kg similarly these are the other prefixes that we use for different magnitudes of these units for example if i have to express 1.1 tera meters i can also write it as 1.1 into 10 raised to power 12 meters similarly 2.3 giga kelvin can also be written as 2.3 into 10 raised to power 9 kelvin so in uh, instead of writing it like this i can also write it uh, directly in terms of its prefix similarly we have negative powers of 10 you may have known deci centi and milli are used for 10 to the power minus 1 minus 2 and minus 3 for example 1 cm is essentially 1 by 100th of a meter similarly we have other prefixes that will be repeatedly coming and you should remember them taking an example for the same 1.1 nm is also called as 1.1 nanometers which is 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 9 meters so this essentially can directly be expressed as 1.1 nm where n is nano prefix similarly 2.3 millimoles is simply 2.3 into 10 to the power minus 3 moles so this fundamental idea about prefix must be clear to you so summarizing what we just learned i can say that units are the most basic arbitrarily chosen and internationally accepted entities for measurement there are two kinds of units fundamental and derived fundamental units are arbitrarily chosen but once they are chosen they become the foundation for that metric system every other unit is derived from them and those units are called derived units si units are the most recent worldwide accepted units for measurement they have seven fundamental and two other units defined within them the other two units being plane angle and solid angle now scientists use multiple different prefixes to explain to express different orders of magnitude they'll be coming repeatedly in uh, expressions for measurement and as a student you must remember them thank you